print knot. I'm gonna come up from the back. This might be hard to tell. When I put my needle back in, I'm gonna be going very close to, but not in the same hole. The first thing I'm gonna do is wrap my thread around my needle away from me two times. One, two. Then I'm gonna pull all that slack out by sliding my needle down and pulling this thread tight. So what I'm left with now is two loops around my needle and my needle is pulled nice and close to my fabric. So this is where I'm gonna slide my needle back. I'm trying not to lose those knots and I'm going back in now to the back of my thread. This is one time where I will actually put my fingers kind of close, push up against my fabric because as I pull this through, it's hard to get the needle and the thread to come through that knot that we just formed. And then I pull slowly and tight. So sometimes you make a French knot that looks amazing and you love it. And then sometimes you make a French knot that can look real dumb. But especially when you're clustering them all up together, it doesn't really matter how one looks on its own. So let's say I leave too much slack. And when I go to pull this through, my needle, when I go to pull this through, my knot is like not close enough to my fabric. It still looks kind of loose. I can turn it over and pull the slack out from the back. And then from the front, my knot will look a little bit better. So if you find your knots are looking a little too loose, Turn it over and start to pull slack from the stitches on the back and that will help. So you can use a French knot to make the top of a J or an I. You can use it for little berries. You can cluster it inside the center of a flower or like here I use the French knot to make a string of pearls. 